Hey guys and welcome to Nick My name is Cody and in today's video we're going to be making this cute little bean from Fall Guys. Fall Guys is a video game that you can play on your computer and I believe also on the PS4. It is taking the internet by storm and I've received so many requests for this little guy that I figured I would make him. He is super cute and I think he's adorable. So this is going to be referred to as the little bean character from here on out or my Fall Guy. Either way we're going to be going over how to make the general body shape, the arms, the feet, and also this cute little face. I am going to be doing the eyes with some fabric paint, so you will need some fabric paint. You will also, I'm going to plop the little bean over here, you will also need some worsted weight yarn in both whatever the main color you're choosing for your body, as well as some white. So your main color and white. I'm using Vanna's Choice. I hear that they're actually going out of business. I don't know if that rumor is true, but I've not been able to find it anywhere locally. So that may be a thing. I'm also gonna be using some fabric paint. You will also need some stuffing. This would easily be made with like four or five of them with a pound bag. You don't need that much stuffing. I am also gonna be using a size D three or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my Furls crochet hook in today's video. I think it is beautiful and I do have an affiliate link with them. That will be down below if you're interested in this and getting a discount code for uh, Furls crochet hook on your own. They are a little pricey, but I think that they are totally worth it. They reduce the stress on my hands and I love them. So that's gonna be my little spiel there, my little sponsor spiel. And basically there will be a printable PDF for this as well. I'm gonna link that down below, that will be free. This is a um, character that is copyright, so I tend not to charge for those because well, the copyright gods will be angry and spite me. I actually have that happen. And if you wanna hear about that, I can do that in a uh, fact video, which I might be asking some questions for, for in the future. All right, let's get started. All right, so for this tutorial, I am going to be basically doing the same increasing that I just did for my last video, where I explained how I stagger my stitches instead of stacking them. Staggering them is when you alternate on your even rounds uh, how you place your increases, which makes for a more round amigurumi. I'm going to just do the same increasing that I did for that video. It is basically increasing six stitches every single round until you get to 36 stitches. And I'm going to then single crochet around for 13 rounds. So now that I've done my increases to 36, I'm not going to show this. You're going to need to know how to do single crocheting, some increasing and working in the round in order to do this tutorial. I will be showing more in depth how I do the arms and the legs and how I do the little face here. But for the basic little bean body, I'm going to assume that you generally know how to make an oval shape. The more intricate part is to do the uh, added parts right here. So. You're going to follow the last tutorial that I showed, which I will link down below if you're confused. You're going to single crochet six. I'm gonna post a little card up here where I explain the pattern generally. You're gonna single crochet six, increase every single stitch, every other, every third, every fourth, and then every fifth stitch until you get to 36 stitches. I show a full tutorial on that, which will be linked down below. But after that, I'm then going to just single crochet around and around and around and around and around for 13 rounds. So I'll be right back as soon as I get that done. I have only a little bit left of this skein, so I'm going to tie off and try to alternate and do this stuff like that. But I'll be right back as soon as I get that done, and then I'll show you how I finish off the decreasing rounds. It's essentially the inverse of my increasing rounds, if that makes sense, but I'll show you in more depth what that means. I actually don't have a tutorial on how to do decreasing rounds when it comes to that, so uh, I will show that in this video. Be right back. All right, so I have gone around 13 times, um, just single crocheting around all of the 36 stitches, and now I'm going to do the inverse of my increases and do that for my decreases. And what I mean by that is, this is my start right around here. And what I plan on doing is I'm going to stagger my stitches instead of stacking them. So this is gonna look a little bit different than how I did it before. All right, so I just had for my last row, single crochet two, increase single crochet two. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm mirroring my stitches for my increases, but instead of increasing, 
I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm decreasing. So we're going to single crochet two. I already did that for right there, one, two, and then I'm going to take and do an invisible decrease. So I put my hook in the first loop, and then I swoop in and I put my hook in the second loop as well. And then I just single crochet like normal through both of those loops and put them together. That will make an invisible decrease. You'll see, you'll be able to tell where your decrease is if you're really looking, but then you go into the next stitch and just single crochet one and two again. So we single crochet one, two, decrease, single crochet one, two again. And this is a little bit different than what you would usually do, which is single crochet four, decrease. I'm staggering my decreases, which I also find makes it look way more seamless as well. So we're gonna do that again. One, two, put through both loops, decrease, and then another two stitches where I just single crochet around. One, two. One, two, through both loops, decrease. One, making sure you don't go through that loop that you just decreased. I just split it though. So that's the loop that I decreased. So I'm gonna go in and single crochet one and two. I'm gonna keep doing this the entire time around. It should be six repetitions, one, two, Trying not to split. This is older yarn, so I'm having a hard time not splitting it. And I don't know why it's doing this. There we go. One, two. It gets harder the bigger this gets to show it on screen. So one, two, decrease, one, should have one more repetition after this, two, then one, no, two, decrease, one, two. So now, as I hit my camera, there we go, stay in focus. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take my tail out from up above here and now I'm going to pull it through my last stitch over here and that's how I'm going to keep track of where my rows begin. Same thing as before. So actually there we go. Next up we're going to do what we did on our second to last increase round where we just single crochet three. So one, two, three and then you do four and five together and decrease so one two three four and five together decrease so one two three four and five together, decrease, pull my tail out a little bit, one, two, three, four, and five together, and I believe we have one more? No, two more, okay. I believe. One, two, three. Don't split your yarn like I just did. Four and five. One, two, three, four and five right there together there we go 
pull our tail out, pull it through there. So I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to stuff this real quick. This is about where I like to make sure that it's all stuffed and as full as I want it. It's still a big enough hole, but it's tapered a bit more, so I'm able to actually get it in the right angle and it looks better. So I'm going to keep decreasing six stitches every single round. I've already popped up a main tag and then I'm going to keep putting up little subtitles right there where I go for the stitch by stitch, but I'm going to go stuff this real quick and I'll be right back. All right. So I have still not done any more decreases. I am still at 24 stitches right now. I have stuffed my little bean. I'm not sure how it looks quite yet. Also notice that this is smaller looking slightly than the other one, but I feel like that's just because this has been in a ball for a while. So the weight of the yarn essentially is kind of a little bit off. All right, so we're going to single crochet one for our next round and decrease. We're going from 24 stitches down to 18 and then single crochet one. This is what I mean by staggering because before you would single crochet two, decrease, single crochet two, decrease. Instead, we're single crocheting one, decreasing, and then single crocheting one after that decrease. That way it's a bit more offset and it looks better. I know it's a little hard to see the decreases right now because I can't get a good angle on the little bean right here. All right, single crochet one. I just did a decrease. We're gonna do another single crochet one. I'm trying to work on my tension. So single crochet one, we're gonna do this again six times and then decrease. Single crochet one, single crochet one, E. Decrease. Nope, I split the yarn there. Decrease. There we go. Single crochet. Nope. I am splitting this yarn because it's so old. But I don't have any options. There's such a yarn shortage in my, my local area that I can't find any good yarn. Which is very upsetting and I'm not going to order online quite yet. That's a decrease, single crochet one, so we're again another repetition. Single crochet one, decrease, and single crochet one. We have one more repetition, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. All right, so now we have 18 stitches on our work. We're going to do our, I believe, second from last. There we go. I can not hit my screen for once. There we go. Maybe not. Um, single crochet one and then decrease is what we're going to do next. That is going to be taking us from 18 down to 12. So single crochet one, Decrease, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, decrease, and I believe we have one more left, single crochet one and decrease. So there we are for our last, second to last row. I'm going to make sure that this is as stuffed as I want it to be, smooth it out a little bit, kind of smush it, make sure that I'm happy. It needs a little bit more stuffing right there, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit more, split it up a little bit. And then on our last row, I am going to decrease from 12 down to 6 stitches. There we go. I'm going to do just a slight bit more. Put that aside. And <laughs> not bounce my screen. There we go. And put him right there. Kind of let it round out. Make it happy. And so now we are going to go from 12 stitches. I'm happy with how that's stuffed. Down to 6. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more right there. 
it's not quite round yet. There we go. As I make big loud noises. I'm sorry. There we go. Now it's flatter. We're going to pick that up. Go here. And we're literally going to decrease every single stitch. So we're going to go through the front loop. The second loop. And decrease one. The next loop. And the, try not to get the stuffing. That's the hard part for this. There we go. Second and the last loop. Decrease two. Decrease the third stitch. Decrease a fourth stitch. Decrease the fifth stitch. And decrease the last one. All right, you'll notice that there is still quite a little bit of a hole there. I will show you how I fix that. We're going to snip that. I am then going to pull my tail all the way through my stitch, like so, where I just kind of pull it through and it's alert. I'm then going to take my other tail and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just snip off that uh, stitch marker, essentially. I'm going to take my darning needle, just a blunt tipped one right here, and I'm going to take my tail, put it on the darning needle, there you go. And I'm going to take my tail and feed it through from the middle, kind of from the back of the stitch through to the front. Pull it through. Do it for every single one of those stitches. Two. Go all the way around. Three. Four. Five. And this is the last actual stitch right there. I'm also going to take my needle and put it through the top of my stitch again. I went underneath before, but now I'm going to go back on top. And now what you can do is you can then tug on your tail and it completely closes it up. I'm then going to take my stitch and go through the front of that stitch again. And I'm going to feed it through the side, just kind of go through the middle of that stitch and go through the side just to make it nice and tug. It is completely hidden and I'm pretty happy with that. So that is our bean base body. Next up, I'm going to make the face for it because I like having a little face on it. And then we're going to do the arms and then I think we're going to do the little feet. So first up, we're going to do the little face and the face is very similar to, let me throw away that tail, is very similar. We have a little bean body like so. So the face is actually really similar to what we did for our increases um, on the, the top here. But instead of going out to 36 stitches, we went from 6, 12, 18, 24 with the white. And then I ended up attaching the blue and went around for uh, 30 stitches, just doing another increase round, but with blue, or in this case, I'll be doing hot pink. So I'm now going to be taking my increases. I've already done them because I showed them in my last video, like I said. Um, I'm going to be going from six to 12 to 18 to 24. I staggered my 24 increase round. I am on my very last stitch of that so i did a single crochet one increase single crochet one and i'm going to show again i am just going to undo my last stitch i'm going to single crochet one oh not split my yarn let me actually go to my good book there we go i don't know why i was on that one there we go single crochet one there we go, <laughs> pull it through. And instead of going through again with my white, I'm going to take my pink yarn, my active what I'm working with yarn, and I'm gonna hold it to the back of my work, and I'm gonna pull that through my two white loops right there. So, a thing that I do a little bit differently when it comes to this face, however, is I want it to look like his little face is kind of going inward a little bit. So I go through back loop only. And what that means is I usually would go through just the front loop. So this V 
One is a front loop and one is a back loop. Front loop, back loop. And usually I go through the front loop. But for here, I want all those front loops to be kind of a ridge. So I'm gonna go through the back of the loop and I'm going to increase from 24 to 30. And how I do that is I'm gonna single crochet one, going through the back loop only. So I'm making all these bumps just raise. Two, go into the next loop. Three, loop, there we go, I can say words. And then on the fourth stitch, we're going to increase four and we're gonna increase that to five. So I'm gonna keep going around like that, just going through the back loop only. One, two, three, four, increase, same loop. And you'll notice that this ridge is starting to form when you go through the back loop only. One, two, three, four, increase, four halfway through now. One, he needs to be out of the way. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. So that's an increased stitch. You have two more. One, two, three, four, and five. One more time. One, two, three, we have one more stitch left, and you can tell because it's the only white stitch left out of all the white and pinks. So increase that stitch as well. So I have another technique that I'm gonna show you that I do. I'm gonna make my pink tail, I'm gonna cut that and make it a little bit longer because I'm going to do um, some sewing with that. I'm gonna take my tail and I'm going to actually cut my pink yarn as well. I'm gonna. Hold on, I'm gonna fix my white yarn and I'm gonna fix my pink yarn on the back. So these are my tails that from when I added them on and from when I changed over. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to double knot and I'm gonna make it a little tighter so that the um, difference is a little bit tighter so it sh doesn't show a difference quite as extremely. It looks a bit more round. So now that I've done that, I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to cut it really, really short. Not so short that like it's going to unravel, but short enough that when it gets behind here, you won't be able to notice it and it won't be in the way. I'm going to do the same thing with my first tail. I'm going to cut that one really short because I worked it into my stitches already. So there we go. Those are out of the way and you don't have to really think about them as much. So what we do next is we're going to take our loop and we're going to pull it all the way through with our tail like so. And I'm going to do the fastening off technique that I use called the invisible fastening off. A link for that is also going to be down below. So if you want me to go a bit more slowly, I can do that. It's in another video where I definitely go a bit more step by step. But the general explanation for this, I'm going to do a quick little rundown, is we're going to skip our first stitch that we made for our round of here. And we're going to go into our second stitch. We're essentially creating a stitch over this. So we're going to go into the second one from the front and into the back. I'm going to pull that through and now we have one of the loops, the front loop of our V. We're then going to go through the center of our stitch and push it all the way through the back. And the tighter you pull your tail, the smaller your loop. So I always try to tie it as, so I always try to pull it as tight as it needs to be in order for the loop to look the same as the rest of these stitches. So here we're good and it looks pretty on par. And there's a reason why we went through just the back loops there because when you do 
not to do that. It doesn't look like it pops quite as much. You're fine to do that. It's not like the biggest difference, but I like how that looks a bit more. This is what it would look like otherwise. You kind of goof up and that little ridge is not there. And I like how that ridge shows up on the face because it looks like it's a bit more inset on the face and that's what the character kind of looks like. So I'm going to get rid of this one and we're going to then sew this onto our little bean body. So I'm going to take it so that the loop is kind of coming up here. I'm going to make it so that the top of the ridge is going to be going right next to a increase from your last increase round. I'm then going to take a little bamboo sticker and we're going to just kind of stick them so that he'll stay where he needs to be during sewing. So I'm going to do that. It's not going to move around on me. I'm going to make sure all of my tails are tucked away. And the way that I sew is we are going to take our darning needle and go from left to right onto the body. We're then going to pull that through. I'm going to go through the front loop of any stitch that I'm going and I'm going to go from left to right and I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to then do that again where I go through from left to right, right next to the stitch that I want to then go through next. And I'm going to keep doing that until it is done. So I'm going to keep doing that and about every third or fourth stitch that I do, I kind of tug on it because it brings all the stitches and it looks a bit more tight. So I'm going to keep doing that all the way around until I'm done. And then next up, we are going to work on the arms. And then after that, we're going to work on the feet. And then at the very end, I'll show you how I do the paint for his face. And then he's all done. He's pretty easy. Okay, so next up, we're going to do arms. And these are pretty easy. This is just a slight variant on my increasing when it comes to the first two rounds. And then I go around from rows three through 10. So I'll explain. We're going to make our magic ring and we're going to place five stitches on the inside of it. So our magic ring is just our chain one and two. I'm going to go inside and put five single crochet inside of my ring. So two, three, I'm trying not to let this get snagged. There we go. Four and five. We are not going to go up to six. So for five, we're going to pull our tail. And what I like to do next is I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to put it into my very first single crochet. There we go. And I like to keep my tail a part of my stitches for this next round and only in this next round. I'm going to increase every single one of those five stitches. So we're gonna go from five to 10. And there's a reason why I'm working my tail in and uh, that's because it's such a small piece that if I don't work my tail in and then I just cut my tail or I don't like weed it through, uh, weave it through the inside of the arm, then I could very easily um, come undone. So I find that this helps me uh, minimize that. So I'm on my third stitch for my increase. And there we go. And then another increase. We're just gonna increase every single one of these stitches. And then we have one last increase. We're gonna go to 10 stitches, not split our yarn, oops. I messed up because of that. There we go. And now we're going to go on our last stitch with our tails if it's a part of it and not split down the center. That was my mistake. There we go. And increase. All right. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches. And we're going to go from ten. We're not going to increase anymore. That's all we're going to do. We're going to go from 5 to 10 and then single crochet for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rounds. So from rounds 3 through 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
we're going to just single crochet around and then i'm going to sew that onto the side of the body with another one of my little pins like so i kind of level it up so that it's halfway up to the eye and then i'm going to stab it through and pin it and then i'm going to sew it on along that ridge and i'm going to do the same thing on both sides it's super easy all i'm going to do is single crochet around until i have 10 rounds completely done we're basically just going to go around and around and around until i get it to the size that i want it all right so as soon as that's done i'm going to sew them on and next up we're going to work on the feet all right so i misspoke i think i said 12 and i meant to say 10 so rows 3 through 10 you single crochet around. I'm also going to take a little bit of a ball of fluff and I'm going to stuff it into the tip of my arm. I like using the bottom of my crochet hook to do so. It makes it a little bit more um, just fluffy looking. I did it for my other one as well. So I'm going to sew this onto the other side of my arm here so that they're on the same level. And then we're going to work on the feet. Be right back. All right, so the last thing that we're going to work on, well, the last two things is A, I'm going to show you how I do the face with the paint, but that's going to be the last. I'm going to show you how I do this cute little boot foot for my little doll here. So the way that we do this, it's going to be a little bit different than just making a magic ring and calling it good. These are obviously little boots. And the way that you do that is we're gonna have to work through the backs of some stitches and we're gonna have to do some chaining. So I'm gonna make my little slip knot. We're going to then chain five. These are our foundational chains. So one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three, four, five chains. And what we do next is we're going to single crochet one stitch into the next three chains we're skipping the first or well, fifth i guess the, the the one chain closest to your hook we're going to go into the next one and single crochet one go into the next one two nope two there we go next last one third we're gonna single crochet into that. Now we have one more chain left from there. We're going to place three single crochet inside that one, and this is gonna kind of round it out. Oh, I split my yarn. Hold up, let's try that again. All right, so we're going to make a slip knot like so. We're going to do five chains. This is our foundation. So one two, three, four, and five. We're going to skip the chain closest to our hook and we're gonna go into the next one. So we're going to put one single crochet inside this one. We're going to put a single crochet inside the next stitch after that and the stitch after that. So that those three chains have single crochets inside of almost all of them. We skip the first one, put single crochets into the next three, and now on the last one, we're going to place three single crochet. So one, two, three. Now we have a little bit of a line. We're going to turn our work and we're gonna start working through the back loops of those stitches. So we're gonna go into, I'm gonna keep my tail as if it is a part of it because I find that that makes it a bit more smooth. I'm gonna to try to loosen this up a little bit because this is the stitch that I wanna go into, but it's not really agreeing with me because it's so tight. There we go. We're gonna put our tail in front and we're going to put three single crochet into the next, well, we're gonna put one single crochet into the next three stitches. So one is already there. We're gonna go into the next one and put another single crochet. And then we're gonna put another single crochet. And if you get confused, I will have a step-by-step -step pattern tutorial for this on my Ravelry. I'm gonna move that real quick, there we go. And now I'm gonna still keep my tail as if it is a part of my work. 
until I get to the very end of this. My end row is this last chain here. I'm going to place two single crochet inside of that one. So one and two. So we should now have 11 stitches active. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to keep my tail kind of pulled back. I'm not going to work it in into any more stitches. But now we are going to put an increased stitch in our first. This is now our second row. And we're going to put an increase right there into the very first stitch. One, two. And in the next two stitches, we're going to just single crochet like normal. So one into the next stitch, put another one. And now we're kind of on the little corner here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put an increase in the next three stitches. So we're going to put an increase one, two inside the next stitch, go into the second stitch, put another increase. So one and then two. And then the third stitch, we're going to put one and two. And then we're going to just single crochet down the next or last five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. This increased us from 11 stitches up to 15. So these are now going to be our 15 stitches that we're working on for row three. And we're going to do a similar technique that we did with the face over here. We're going to work through the back loops only. So we want this little bit of a, a, a sole, as you can see, there's little back loops. We're here and we're going to essentially go around all 15 stitches through the back loop only to create this base of your foot. So I'll show you what I mean here. This is the back stitch. So we're gonna go through one, two, going through the back stitch only, making that rise from the front loop. Three, four, five, six, seven, and it's going to want to curl on itself, but you're going to want to kind of set it straight so that it's going the right way. Eight. I actually don't remember where I am. Nine. I don't know because I know I've touched the, the loops will go back. So we're almost there. We're around in the corner again. And two more stitches and then we're done. As I'm going off screen, I'm sorry. And the last one there. There we go. So now we went around and we created a sole and we're on row four. We're going to single crochet from the front loop, going back to normal for the next four stitches. So one, two, three and four and now we're going to start rounding our boot and the way that we do that is we're going to take the next well it's going to be four decreases but it's going to be across the next eight stitches so we're going to go into our first decrease one second decrease i'm going to go through both loops just like we did for earlier two three and four. We should be back down here and we're going to single crochet into the next three stitches right here. One, two, and three. I'm actually going to take my tail and pull it through because I find that that will make it a little easier on the last round. Last two rounds. All right, so now we're on round five. We created a sole and now we're starting to taper it essentially. We're going to single crochet into the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, and five. We're going to decrease the next two stitches, so one and two, I'm not splitting it, there we go, and just decrease. It's so going to do our last decrease, that was it, and now we're going to single crochet into the next four, last four stitches of this round. So one, two, three, four. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches actively happening right now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to single crochet around those 10 stitches again. One, this is round six, two, three, four, five, oop, five, there we go, six, seven, eight, nine, What I like to do here is I'll go into the next of what would be the top of the first stitch of round seven. I'm going to pull that and just do a slip stitch right off. I'm going to create a nice long tail, pull that through, and kind of I like to take it and pull it underneath my tail, underneath that stitch as well. I think that it looks a little neater. And I'm also going to take my original tail, this right here, what I was using as a stitch marker. And I'm going to cut that because I already worked it into my stitches so I don't have to worry about it unraveling. And what I like to do is I'm going to take a little bit of stuffing. I don't need a lot. I don't need a crazy amount. But I'm going to stuff it just ever so slightly so that it keeps its shape. I'm going to try to make sure that it keeps its shape basically. I'm going to do it with both of my boots. And what I like to do when I'm attaching these is, here we go, I also like to take these and I like to take the ends and kind of smush it. I don't need a crazy amount, I need a little bit more in this one, so I'm going to try to take about half that. There we go. There we go. And I actually like to take these. I'm using these a lot with my stitches. I'm going to take him and I'm going to take my little piece here and I want my feet to kind of just be sewn along the bottom. But I find that it's hard to just sew and attach it. So I'm gonna take this foot and I want him right around there. I'm gonna take this little stitch. I'm gonna stab him through his body and through the foot so that it's actually we're aligned up where I want him to be sewn. So that's where I want that foot. That's right around where I want it. I'm going to do the same thing with this foot as well. There we go. And yeah, that's about where I want the feet. So I'm going to go sew those on real quick. And since they're kind of stitched on, it's not really hard to sew that on. And then I'll show you how I do the little eyes real quick with the fabric paint. Super duper easy. And then you are all done with your little Fall Guys bean dude. Be right back. Okay, so the feet are on. I'm happy with how they turned out. I like how kind of crooked and like just generally tiny and cute they are. Um, you have two options when it comes to the eyeballs. I'm lazy and I like to just do some quick little eyes and I let them dry overnight. Um, I'm going to be using some fabric paint for this guy, but you could also very easily take some black embroidery thread or just even some black yarn and um, just embroider the eyes real quick. I'm going to take it and I'm going to go along here, along the um, third row on either side and I'm going to just do a line across two stitches. I'm gonna try to make a nice good thick line. I'm gonna try to make it nice and straight. 
Oh, now I gotta go a little above because it actually decided to go above. Like so. So when I get nice long eyes, this actually might be cuter than the original one that I made. I try really hard not to leave like a little tail like that. It just looks weird to me. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing. No! Across here. There we go. Yeah, I don't want that. That looks terrible. There we go. Try to smooth it. Smooth it across the entire body. There we go. I'm happy with that. That looks pretty cute. I actually like how that looks a bit more. It's super duper adorable. I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out. And those are my little fall guys. And if you are interested in the pattern, again, this is on my Ravelry. His eyes are a little crooked. Maybe I need to do a little bit lower on this side. It's the downside to paint is you always end up with a little bit more and then you make a mess and then you're like, why did I go back in? But you can't help yourself. There we go. And I'll... I got a little dot there, but I'm not going to try and mess with it, because otherwise if you smudge it, it can be bad. I'll just take a little pair of scissors and I'll snip it. There you go. That looks a bit more even. This one came out a little bit more crooked than the other one, and I think it's because this yarn is really old, and um, I just was not as happy. All right, so... I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Again, if you need a printable PDF for this, it is on my Ravelry. This one is a completely free pattern. Um, you don't have to worry about it. I will also have a little surprise coupon code for my friends who want to download one of my patterns, one of my other Ravelry patterns for free. The link will be down below, so stay tuned for that or just, you know, look for it. Um, like, subscribe, do all that stuff if you're really into yarn stuff. It really does help us out. We are getting close to 33,000 subscribers, and that is crazy bonkers. Oh my god, I cannot get over how amazing that is. So, um, yeah, do the whole subscribe thing. It helps us out, and it makes me very, very happy. Um, we have a Patreon, and we have PayPal if you're interested in that kind of stuff. No stress, but the links are all down below. I also have some affiliate links for things like Furl's Crochet and for Knit Crate if you're interested in those kinds of things and you want to get coupon codes and all that stuff. That's pretty much all there is to this tutorial, so uh, stay tuned. And if you want more geeky crafts, I have a playlist down below of some more geeky game-related um, tutorials and amigurumi as well. All right, until next time, guys. Bye!